Good evening and a very warm welcome to To The Point. I'm Birgit and it's a real blessing to be back with you for the program tonight. Well, the topic on the program tonight is all about addiction. And in Galatians 5, 1, we read that it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. And yet for those caught in addiction, the reality is quite different with feelings of being trapped and out of control. So our hope on the program tonight is to offer hope in the possibility of Jesus setting us free. And joining me to discuss this is evangelist and founder of Lumina Ministries, George Osborne. George, welcome back to To The Point. Thank you very much for having me back. Thank you. Good to see you. Yeah, well, you were with us last week, George, but mm -hmm. I'm just thinking that there may be people who are just watching for the first time tonight. So mm -hmm. I wonder if you'd just share a little bit about yourself and about your ministry. Yep. Um, so Lumina Ministries, we reach out to people in sort of very dark situations. So sometimes going to New Age shows and reach people that have been in the occult. That was my sort of background. And um, also work in a community outreach centre. So we're reaching out to various different people in the community, but also a lot of addicts and, and people that struggle with addictions and things like that. So I've uh, got some background as well for me personally, just in, in addiction in my past before becoming a Christian. Um, so yeah, that's a little bit about me. Yeah, that's really helpful, George, and it will be mm. interesting as we go on with the discussion just to hear a little, about, a little bit about your own experience yeah. and those that you've ministered to, because I think it's quite powerful hearing testimonies mm. and seeing the reality of how people suffer with this, with addiction, yeah. and actually the reality that Jesus really can set us mm. free and heal us, so it's quite hopeful. Um, but I wonder if we could start with just offering a definition mm -hmm. about addiction, what it is, the yeah. nature of it. Okay. Um, so I looked up Oxford Dictionary. Mm -hmm. So this is just to read out their definition. It says, um, the fact or condition of being addicted to a particular substance or activity. So I think that's quite helpful. Fact or, or condition of being addicted to a particular substance or activity. And I might even put in there something like, not just activity or substance, but, but person yeah. um, or thing. You know, we can be addicted to, to lots of different things, but it's this um, needing to keep going back to the same thing, I guess, is a good way to describe an addiction. That's really helpful, needing mm. to go back to the same thing, because I have a definition to complement what you've just shared, yeah. and this is something that I found online from the National Institute on Drug Abuse okay. it's in America. Mm. It's similar to what you've just described, but it talks about a chronic and relapsing condition mm. characterized by dependence, um, and they've stated here on a mind-altering substance, yeah despite negative life consequences, mm -hmm. but actually what you've shared is so helpful because it can also be an activity um, or a behavior. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the net can be quite it's broad. It's a very broad net, actually. Yes. Yeah. Surprising mm -hmm. what can be addic uh, an addiction, yeah. actually. Yeah, and I think your word there, the, the dependence, yes. so something that we depend on to, to bring us whatever it is that we're looking for. So it's that dependence. So it, that is very broad, isn't it? You could depend on lots of different things and people and yes. you know, you could go for you know, people being addicted to going to the gym or, you know, you can throw this net out quite wide. I think when we think of addiction, automatically we think of, of drugs and drinking and it certainly can be those things, yeah. but it's, it's a lot wider, isn't it? It's almost like um, alcoholism is the prototype of addictions. That's yeah, how some psychologists yeah. have spoken about it. Yeah. Actually, on that note, though, it would be great to refer to the work of a, of a Christian psychologist who gives some mm -hmm. examples yeah. of addictions. Brilliant. And just to, to introduce the work of Dr. Edward Welch, because mm -hmm. um, we've, we've been speaking about him before the program, we'll be mm -hmm. hearing a video fr um, where he teaches on mm -hmm. this, um, but his work is so helpful because yeah. he combines um, his knowledge of psychology, mm -hmm. but also grounds it very, very deeply in biblical mm -hmm. theology. Yeah. So it's it's a very, very helpful insight that he mm -hmm. gives on this. So um, this is the book that we've been speaking about, Addictions, A Banquet in the Grave. And um, so some of the examples he gives um, he says, now the list of addictive substances and desires is limited only by um, our imagination as we see here. Mm. So alcohol, exercise, sex, anger, gambling, mm. caffeine, mm. love, nose drops, shoplifting, weightlifting, cocaine, lying, sleep, mm. work, chocolate, nicotine, sports, risk, pain. Sugar, success or winning, uh, TV, people, mm -hmm. and pornography. Yeah. So that's a very, very that's covered broad most list. most people, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's very vast, isn't it? And I think that's really helpful. 
Because I think sometimes we, we shut down, don't we, and think, oh, this is just for, for addicts. Well, we're, we're all addicts to one thing or another. It's true, mm. and even um, addiction to um, things such as work or, or ministry, mm. Mm. Um, it's quite surprising to yeah. think that we actually can become dependent on those to, to meet certain needs. Yeah. yeah, so it's not always what is obviously bad things like drink and drugs. Yeah. Um, it can be things that look, look good on the outside, you know, what's wrong with going to the gym or what's wrong with having a healthy life. Um, but actually, if we become addicted to those things, they can be very damaging. And enslaving. Mm. I'm going to be so interested to hear, George, about um, you ministering to people that mm. suffer with addiction. Before we touch on that, it might be helpful just as we're setting the scene with what mm. addiction looks like to go to this teaching by Dr. Edward Welch. Yeah. Uh, so we'll go to this um, teaching now, Dr. Edward Welch speaking about the nature of addiction, how it enslaves us, and how Jesus really can set us free. We'll be back with you in a few moments. Scratch away at an addict, and what you find are things that look pretty universal. My world, my way. I want to manage my world, my emotions, my own way, apart from God. Now, many addicts don't consciously say such things. But when the Spirit of God turns the lights on, we begin to see them more clearly. You will find that in every addict heart. You will also find shame, which apart from Christ, the only way you can deal with shame is you try to drug it away. You use your addiction to try to silence it in some way. Along with shame, you'll find hopelessness, a sense that, that maybe some people have changed, but for me, all I can do is resist this for a period of time, but I know this thing will get me at the end. So as we walk along with those who struggle with addiction, we find that people are powerless. They're powerless against some substance or activity or, or state of mind. The scripture probably would take addiction and say addiction is about love. It's about want. It's about desire. It's about loving something more than anything else. Ultimately, more than we love Christ. It's a relationship, obviously, that has gone bad. And here's the curiosity with addiction. Even when it goes bad, there is that, that apparent irrationality that we're all familiar with, where we still want it. I am enslaved by this thing that I hate. And I see the horrible consequences on work, on family, on health, and I hate it. On the other hand, there's the voluntary. But I still love this. But I have nothing to replace it with. But if I lose this thing that I love, where will I be? My life will be my life will be even more hopeless than it is right now. And you have this mess of all kinds of different things. Scripture offers a number of pictures for for how we think of the battle with addictions. Here it is. Here's this crossroad, and the crossroad will lead toward the darkness or it will lead toward the light. The curious question is, but why do we instinctively go to the darkness? When darkness is about death, darkness is about isolation, darkness is about shame, darkness is about humiliation. In contrast, scripture, by way of ultimately the voice of Christ, is a voice of a shepherd who woos the sheep back to himself with, with his own beauty, with his own self-sacrificial love, he, he calls us back to the light, which at first doesn't sound that good because it exposes our hearts, but when we know there's forgiveness of sins and we know there is fellowship and unity and relationship, all the things that we were, were striving for before, it, uh, it makes the path look pretty good. My hope with the curriculum is this can be something that can immediately be incorporated into pre-existing addictions groups. For churches that don't have groups, it's ready to go. It's, do you have a person who struggles with an addiction within your church? If you do, all you need is one other person to walk alongside of them, a friend who can walk alongside. And there's your small addictions group. And your desire is, as is, is the good news of Christ just, just comes alive uh, with the problem of addiction, 
you can't keep that information to yourself. And it could well be there will be a number of groups that are started in churches, but in some they will just happen organically as this takes root in different individuals' hearts. One of the great promises of Scripture is that the Lord comes to us as Emmanuel. He is the one who is lofty and exalted, who, who sits on the throne and rules, but he's also the one who comes very close to the contrite uh, and those who have been broken and hurt. And he comes to us as Emmanuel, God with us. So there's a certain amount of awe that we live with, recognizing Emmanuel, God with us. But there's also this sense that we are never alone. And isn't there fear in every single addict's heart? Wanting a world that they can manage, but knowing full well that it's impossible to keep the horrors of the world at bay. What a great thing it is to know that we have God with us in the midst of those fears. Welcome back to To The Point, Dr. Edward Welch sharing about addiction, the nature of addiction, and the hope that we have in Jesus for being freed from this kind of trap. George, as we watch that, can I ask mm. for some impressions, what stuck mm. out for you? I just thought that was really helpful, wasn't it? It's great stuff. Um, I think one of the things that stuck out for me is this, this battle that, that addicts often have between knowing that this thing is wrong and not wanting to do it at some level, but on the other side, they love it and they want to do it and they can't imagine life without it. And I think that sort of battle that's, that's raging within is very helpful. Um, and what he touched on with the, the things that we love, you know, it's a love question. What mm -hmm. is it that we really love? What are our affections of our heart really set on? And that's what we become addicted to. Mm -hmm. uh, and I guess what he's encouraging us to do is to put our affections on Christ and and that will then begin to fill our heart and, and set us free from these addictions. It's very true because what he was actually saying ultimately is that this comes down to a question of worship. Mm -hmm. And it, it can be um, quite difficult to hear that when you're caught in an addiction. It, it can be almost unpalatable in a sense to see that there's actually at some level a, a, an issue of worship here. And yet um, that's what Dr. Welsh seems to be pointing at, um, that ultimately we um, can be pointed towards Christ and yeah. being a bondservant to to Christ mm -hmm. or we can be enslaved um, in this voluntary slavery that yeah. he touched on yeah. to this addiction which as you helpfully just described is something that the addict both loves and hates yeah. this conflicted yeah. relationship yeah. there it's torment actually well very difficult yeah and it's a, a daily sort of battle you know there's a, there's a very real they know they've damaged families when we're talking about drug and alcohol addictions they know that that's causing damage but at the same time it's the thing that that's bringing them peace and um, joy even, you know, so it's a real battle and, and you've talked a bit about slavery and one of the favourite verses for me is Jesus saying anyone who sins is a slave to sin. Um, so when we, we follow other things other than Jesus, he's saying, we, we become a slave to it and it's our, our master, we can't help but, but follow it like a little puppy following his owner, you know, it's, it's on a, we're on a chain, a dog lead and we're just being, being drawn along basically. It's true and also what scripture um, points to as the end of that kind of um, slavery mm -hmm. which is, is ultimately death of some mm -hmm. kind that at the time um, it might offer us as you say comfort or escape or relief, mm -hmm. peace, whatever mm -hmm. the case may be, pleasure yeah. but actually the ultimate end of that as, as any addict, addict would probably admit mm -hmm. is that there's a form of death it's, yeah. it's destruction mm -hmm. either to a person's health and well-being um, to, their, to their work life, yeah. their family relationships, other relationships, so um, it, Scripture points to that, mm -hmm. that the ultimate end of this is, is so destructive. Yeah. I mean even in, in my own life, my, my father, he was an alcoholic um, and I guess from an early age seen him sort of steadily drinking more and more um, and it was about six, six, seven years ago now, uh, walked into his apartment, his flat, just to check up on him, he got kind of pretty bad towards the end. Yeah. Um, and actually found him, him dead in that apartment, you know, just rubbish everywhere and flies. But this picture of, of death, really, and, and I think for my father, he, he just wanted to be happy. He wanted to be at peace, he wanted to be okay, you know, and, and, and he thought that the bottle was going to provide him with that. But what he got was, was ultimately slavery and, and death and, you know, that tragic mm -hmm. end, really, so it's horrific. 
It, it's so sad to hear about the experience of your dad in that kind of way. Um, it, it's heartbreaking, actually, in, in what you've said, what he was actually looking for all yeah. the time. It's, it's, it's that piece. Yeah. Um, and I think that it's helpful that you said that, and it came through in Dr. Welch's teaching as well, just that um, the compassion for people that are suffering in this kind mm -hmm. of way and, and, and the compassion that, that God has. Yep. Dr. Welch even talked about um, Jesus' own name being Emmanuel, and mm -hmm. I love that, you know, God with yeah. us, yeah. that no matter what our experience is when we're in the grips mm -hmm. of addiction, mm -hmm. that God himself, that Jesus enters in yep. and he's with us in that and he has so much compassion. Mm -hmm. He understands yeah. perfectly the nature of our struggle yep. and, and why it is that we are in this position, the origins of that in our own mm -hmm. lives mm -hmm. and the, the unique temptations and circumstances that surround us, that 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 help keep us trapped. Mm -hmm. God understands, he yep. sees all of that, and yet he still offers us that hope of yep. healing and freedom, yeah. which is an incredible yeah. thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and what's it say later on in John, you know, if the Son of God sets you free, you will be free indeed, yeah. you know, and he wants that. You shared that Galatians verse at the beginning, he wants us to be free. And I think in my, my own life, when I've had struggles with addictions, the thing that really really helped me um, was realizing that there was more pleasure in following Jesus than there was in following my addiction. So I remember early on becoming a Christian and I'd struggle with alcohol, I was struggling with drugs and I thought well drugs and alcohol are, are quite fun yeah. <laughs> and it's enjoyable um, but I've just got to be a good Christian, I've got to be strong with my willpower and I've got to try and turn away from those things and turn to God Although it's not going to be as much fun, it's the right thing to do, you know, that was my kind of thinking. Um, but then I realised through scripture and through um, various teaching that Jesus wants to give me more fun yeah. and more freedom that we've been talking about. And turning to him was going to bring me more pleasure. And it might not always be that kind of instant fix that I'd get from that drink or that drug. But in the long term, I want to testify here today yeah. as well that I've found that freedom and that joy and that pleasure in Christ that I never found in any drug. You know, the next day the drug would wear off and you've got to repeat this cycle. Mm. You can keep going back to Jesus and that joy and that freedom is there. It's amazing actually mm. to hear your testimony in there. And I think it's so helpful the way that you've described that. It, it's so mm. true that actually um, the pleasure that the activity can represent seems to be yeah. um, more real and more tangible and immediate than, than actually the hope and the joy and the pleasure that's ultimately found in Christ. Yeah. So it's very real what you've just talked about. But can I ask you about mm. that? Because I think that if anybody's watching who is trapped in some form of addiction, yeah. um, that the lure, I think, is the immediate gratification that comes with satisfy with being satisfied. So if it's alcohol, for example, or um, even people pleasing, knowing mm -hmm. that you know we have a person's positive regard, it can yeah. become quite an addictive thing where yeah. we're seeking that. Or I know that um, pornography is something mm -hmm. that is prolific within the church. Mm -hmm. So the kind of pleasure that might come from that for somebody who, who looks at that. Yeah. To actually, um, I think the question that I'm asking is, mm. Jesus doesn't necessarily offer that immediate gratification yep. in that kind of way. Can you speak to that? Yeah, I think that's a really helpful point actually because we, we need to be honest, don't we, that there is an amount of pleasure in sin, um, but it's a, it's a lie as to it's gonna provide that ongoing pleasure. Mm -hmm. It might be a fleeting one minute look at some pornography on the internet. It might be a quick fix of an injection of heroin. Um, whatever it is for people, but ultimately that that doesn't last and it just wears off. So I think um, for me it's trying to remember in that moment that there is more pleasure in Christ. I, yes, there's a degree of pleasure in this thing, but I need to turn away from that and back to Christ. So mm -hmm. it's trying to put things in place as well. I mean, you talk about pornography, don't leave yourself on your own with the internet, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, get groups around where you can talk to one another and share your struggles, ask somebody to pray for you, you know, all these things. So putting things in place for that immediate temptation moment where it's that voice or whatever is saying, go to this thing, it's gonna give you a little bit of pleasure. But mm -hmm. ultimately it's remembering that won't give you long-term 
pleasure. Yeah. So it's putting things in place that can get you away from it. And if anything, it will very quickly turn into regret, shame, yeah. um, the sting of sin, yeah. which Dr. Welsh spoke about as well. Mm -hmm. And actually, what Scripture speaks about it. And before we start talking about some of the people that you've ministered to, because I'm mm -hmm. so fascinated by yeah. seeing Jesus at work in these people's mm -hmm. lives, we looked at this um, passage from Proverbs, which yeah. might be good just to read, because mm -hmm. the Bible is amazing yeah. that it actually yeah. just captures the reality yeah. of, of these human experiences yeah. so powerfully. And this part of Proverbs actually mm -hmm. um, talks about alcoholism, which is in, in effect the prototype of all yeah. addiction, actually. Yeah. Yeah. So um, it it's talks a great about description. It's incredible, it? actually. Yeah. It talks about the initial pleasure turning into mm -hmm. that sting. So this is Proverbs 23, beginning at verse 29. And it says, Who has woe? Who has sorrow? Who has contentions? Who has complaints? Who has wounds without cause? Who has redness of eyes? Those who linger long at the wine, those who go in search of mixed wine. Do not look on the wine when it is red, when it sparkles in the cup, when it swirls around smoothly. At the last, it bites like a serpent and stings like a viper. Mm. Your eyes will see strange things and your heart will utter perverse things. Yes, you'll be like the one who lies down in the midst of the sea, or like one who lies at the top of the mast, saying, They have struck me, but I was not hurt. They have beaten me, but I did not feel it. When shall I awake that I may seek another drink? I mean, even that last verse is incredible yeah. that it just captures, yeah. even yeah. though there's all this destruction and damage, the nature of addiction is to want uh, one more. Another, another drink. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. certainly a kind of slavery yeah. drawing us back. Yeah. Because that person can only think that, that drink is going to be the thing that's going to make all this disaster go away. There's yeah. no other place for them to turn, unfortunately, in their mind. Um, but it's so real, isn't it? I mean, doesn't that capture it brilliantly, what, what happens to someone that's drinking? and It's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, just with the remaining part of the program, it would be yeah. so interesting now to hear about your ministry because um, with the Lighthouse Project, mm -hmm. um, you come across people that have been trapped in different kinds of addiction and yeah. seen Jesus bring healing. Would mm -hmm. you be able to share some anonymous stories with us? Yeah, sure. So, yeah, we, uh, at the project, we often get people coming in, um, different walks of life, and as we touch on in the program, different addictions. Um, one lady kind of springs to mind initially, um, we call her Sarah, um, in a very dark place, but she's addicted to heroin. Um, and just very trapped, I mean, talked about on that video, shame, and uh, she's had a very difficult past, and lots of bad stuff, stuff happened to her in her childhood, and just very broken. But a bit like this picture in Proverbs, she's just going to, to heroin to, to try and get rid of this, this feeling of shame, and and bitterness and anger and all these different feelings that she's got um, but very simply just trying to as Edward Welsh said on that video share the good news of Jesus Christ of who she is when she puts her trust in Jesus mm -hmm. that she is covered that that shame is is gone that she doesn't need to feel ashamed of her past that she can be yeah. set free from that uh, that there's joy in the fruit of the Spirit that, that God wants to give her joy in her life and so what we try and do is, is really just minister those truths through weekly Bible studies. Uh, we run a couple of prayer sessions through the week as well so they can come and sit down and have one-on-one -on -one time with people and, and, and be prayed over. Um, wow. Prayer, you know, helps massively. Yeah. Um, so we've seen her make real um, progress with her addictions and become free from, from the heroin uh, and making inroads into that, so that's amazing. Um, another chap just spring into mind, um, anger issues, very angry, um, things have happened in his life, not gone to plan, all those kind of things, so there's a real kind of knotted bitterness when I first met him, mm. um, and he'd often get angry with people and just shouting, and, but again, the same process of bringing him to Jesus, showing him who he is in Christ, that he is saved, that he's been set free, that God is not angry at him now, yeah. that that anger has gone on Jesus, that he can be forgiven of his past. Um, and one of the things that he testifies to when he's turned to Jesus is just this peace, yeah, really, that amazing. he's not experienced before. 
um, that's filled his life and is changing him and, and people and he's got a couple of flatmates and just saying to him, you've really changed, you used to be so angry and <laughs> just seeing that change in him really. Um, it's amazing yeah. and George would you believe that we only have one minute left on the programme okay. but it is, it's actually so hopeful to hear that you've mm. encountered people that have suffered, been trapped with these addictions whether yeah. it's heroin, drug abuse, mm -hmm. whether it's um, anger kind of process type addictions yeah. and actually in no matter what the circumstances are that Jesus Christ does offer that hope mm -hmm. of actually being set free yeah. um, and having a life completely transformed. Mm -hmm. And what would be really helpful, perhaps um, at another time, God yeah. willing, to actually speak about this again and, and to go further into um, how Jesus, like the, the, the nature of the gospel. Yeah, practical, um, yeah. So we, we have a uh, we only have 20 seconds there, so we mm. won't be able to do it on the program this yeah. evening. But it is incredible to speak about the nature of addiction mm -hmm. and to hear the message um, that Jesus Christ can set yeah. us free. Um, so, George, thank you so much for coming on and sharing. In the remaining seconds, do you have anything that you'd like to leave with the viewers? It was for freedom that Christ set us free. Amen. Amen. Thank mm -hmm. you, George. God bless you. See you next week.